Hey guys, what's up, how are you? It is Wednesday and I am here at the beautiful Brasswood Estate. This place is pretty spectacular. They've got custom cars facility in addition to a restaurant, a cafe, an event space, and a tasting room. This place is unbelievable. They have so many spaces and they were kind enough to let me crash their pad today to let me do this very special episode that I've been wanting to do for a little while now. Anyway, as you can see, this space is really beautiful. I'm in the winemaker's den right now. It's a private tasting space. I wanted a special space because I felt like I haven't just talked about wine. I haven't done like a weekly wine picks in a while and a lot of that had to do with the fact that I couldn't ship wine during the summer. It was too hot and there was just a lot going on. So I took a break from that but I wanted to do sort of of uh, a twist on the weekly wine picks. I wanted to do something that a few of you have asked me for, and that is the Wednesday night wine. What is the Wednesday night wine? The Wednesday night wine is basically that wine that isn't quite in the like upper caliber of things that you normally drink. So if you're somebody that typically drinks like very expensive bottles on the weekend or special occasions, or you've got a great collection of wines, but maybe on a Tuesday or Wednesday, you're like, eh, I don't really wanna put the cork on that. I wanna drink something that's good, that I'm gonna enjoy, but isn't quite as expensive. So today is all about that. Today is all about those Tuesday or Wednesday night wines in the $50 to $80 bracket, which I know for some of you is gonna be on the pricier side of things, so this episode does not exclude you. These are definitely wines we're splurging on if that is in the upper echelon of what you're considering purchasing for wines. Um, but for those of you who, are, who have asked me that are typically drinking something more expensive at a different caliber, you're not gonna feel like these wines are cheap or they're not well made. These are fantastic value wines in that $50 to $80 price range that I think you're really gonna enjoy, not just on a Tuesday or Wednesday, but, but all week long. So I'm bringing you four today, and I've done a lot of research on this. This has been a, a question that I've gotten a lot as of late, and I, I've done my best to really find four great wines that I think you guys are gonna enjoy. So let's get started. There are a number of different ways to approach finding value within the wine world. We've talked about a few of them, and some of my favorite hacks include like Cru Beaujolais, going to more obscure regions, esoteric varietals, lots of different things. The one that I really want to focus on today is second labels of premium wine. So what does that mean? So basically for every premium label that's out there, the majority of them have some sort of second label where they're putting maybe some of the younger vines or fruit that didn't quite make the cut, but still comes from the great vineyards that uh, make these great wines. They take that fruit and they put it into a different wine at a less expensive price. You're still getting the quality associated with the, the actual house that's making the wine. You're usually getting the same winemaker, you're usually getting all the same techniques that go into making that wine, you're getting it at a fraction of the price. So that's really what we're gonna focus on today. And the first place we're gonna start is with this little Chateau Neuf de Pop. This is the Telegram. This is View Telegraph. View Telegraph is a premium wine made in the Southern Rhone region in Chateau Neuf de Pop. Now Chateau Neuf de Pop is a great wine for those of you looking to maybe expand your palate. So if you're somebody that really likes California wine, something that's a little bit more fruit forward, but you're like, you know what? There's there's a whole world of wine out there. I wanna try something else. I usually will direct people to Chateau Neuf de Pop. I find that Chateau Neuf de Pop is a really good gateway from getting people from California wines that are usually a little bit more rich, ripe, and robust into old world wines. It's a really nice bridge and transition into that world. Anyway, so this is Chateau Neuf de Pop, and Chateau Neuf de Pop is a region. It's a region in the Southern Rhone in France. This is a blend of Grenache, Syrah, Morved, and Sincere. So predominantly Grenache. And the reason I really like this wine is Telegram is the second label of View Telegraph in the Rhone region. View Telegraph usually runs you anywhere between $75 and $100 bottle. This is at $43 bottle. I love this wine. I think this is truly one of the great values in the wine world still. So this is their wine that they make from younger vines in the property, although the vines are still averaging about 35 years of age. The wine is also seeing a lot less new oak. It only sits in concrete for about 10 months and then in a small berry for about six months. So that means it takes a lot less time for everything to soften. I love this wine, one, because it's incredibly approachable in its youth, and then two, because it's so sun-kissed and it kind of has this beautiful medium-bodied spiciness about it. 
it just makes me think of fall. I also love this one because if you're somebody that wants something maybe a little bit bigger than a Pinot, but not as heavy as a cab, this always sits right in that sweet spot. Grenache always has like a really pretty strawberry nose to it. It's a very fruity wine and it's really friendly. I, I really, I rarely find anybody that, that drinks this wine that's like, eh, it's not for me. But I love this as like your Tuesday night, Wednesday night wine. You don't want to break open something so serious. This wine doesn't need to be aged. This, you can drink right out of the bottle. I just opened this bottle and it is ready to go right out of the gate. You can find this wine and all of these wines on wine.com right now. This is a Kermit Lynch import, which I have talked about before. I love Kermit Lynch. I think he's a great trust agent for French wines and, and wines around the world. So that is my first pick for your Wednesday night wines. Let's go to the next one. In keeping with the theme, this is another second label of a very premium wine called Ornelia. So this is La Serre Nuove del Ornelia from Bulgari. Those of you not familiar with Ornelia, Ornelia is one of the premium Super Tuscan wines. So Super Tuscan is a wine made in Tuscany, not from Sangiovese, but usually from Bordeaux blends. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot. But in this case, this is gonna be a true Bordeaux blend with a little bit more Merlot. All right, so what I love about this wine is this was totally the inspiration for this whole thing. And it started because somebody said, hey, I had this really great wine called Ornelia and it was fantastic, we loved it, but we can't really spend that much money on a bottle every night. So what do you recommend for like a Tuesday, Wednesday night wine? Um, so immediately I was like, well, they make a second label and, and I think that would be a, an incredible Tuesday, Wednesday night wine because the price is fantastic on this. This wine is the second label of Ornelia, which typically retails for like 200, 300, 400 dollars bottle. It's very expensive, super Tuscan, made in Bulgari. But this little second label is only 64.99. So still on the pricier side of things for a lot of us, but definitely not the 200, 300 dollar price tag. The Antonori family is renowned in Tuscany and in Italy for sort of starting that super Tuscan movement. In fact, the founder of Ornelia was his cousin that started it all uh, with Sassacaya, and then his older brother started Solaya. So they're all really premium super Tuscans and Ornelia that's adjacent to the Sasakaya property. Anyway, just a little bit of background on that. Like a lot of second labels, the grapes for this wine actually come from just some of the younger vines on the same vineyard. It's made in the exact same way. On the nose, it's incredibly floral. It's very rosy. You can kind of smell that Cab Franc pulling through. But there's a lot of dustiness on here. It's rich. It definitely smells like a premium wine. It's giving me all of the aromatics that I want out of a premium wine. I just opened this wine. It's at the perfect temperature right now. And it definitely wants some time to sort of open up and relax. The tannins feel a little bit tight right now. As far as density goes, it doesn't quite have the density of, of its older brother, of the Ornelia. That said, it's still really intensely structured. It has a fantastic richness to it. And I still think it's a wine that can definitely be aged. It has a very old world quality to it. It's The fruit isn't crazy extracted. It's not very ripe. It, it doesn't have a greenness about it. It doesn't have the intensity of the fruit that the Chateau Neuf de Pop had. It doesn't have that ripe strawberry kirsch. Far more earth driven, far more tannic, a little bit more grip. I love this wine. Perfect. Let's go to the next one. Finding great values for my super Tuscan lovers was definitely a focus of this video. So I couldn't not do this wine. This is the second label for Sasakaya. We briefly talked about Sasakaya. That is the uh, considered sort of the uh, the grandfather of the Super Tuscan movement in, in Bulgari and Tuscany. And in fact, Sasakaya was really the inspiration for why Bulgari was recognized as a DOC in Tuscany. So we are doing the uh, second label of Sasakaya right now. I'm not moving up in uh, price range, but I am moving up in intensity of these wines. So I basically started with the lightest wine and I'm moving up through what I think will be the densest, fullest bodied wine. And this definitely is more full body than the Ornelia was. Believe it or not, I mean, Sasakai is a very expensive wine, ranging anywhere from like $250 to $500, depending on the vintage, if you can find it. And this wine is only $45. Again, I realize that that is a splurge for some of you, but $45 for a wine made by the producers of Sasakaya is really a steal. On the nose, it has like a really great earthy quality to it. It's still ripe, it still has really great fruit, but it's very complex nose. It's definitely not a one-dimensional nose. There's a lot going on in here, and this is, this is a blend not unlike the, uh, the other Super Tuscan of all of the Bordeaux varietals. 
On the palette, it's a lot more rich, it's a lot more dense, it's silkier, it's more rounded out. This is also a 2013, so it's got one more year of age on it than the Ornelia second label did. It definitely has more fruit, a little less of that earthiness. But that's also Sasakaya. I mean, Ornelia versus Sasakaya. Ornelia typically has like a little bit more of an edge, a little bit more of a rusticity to it. The Sasakaya always has a bit more of that modern feel, a bit more of that ripeness, a bit more of that softness. This is really beautiful, full-bodied, intense wine. Uh, again, that doesn't need a ton of time to open up, which I, I really love about all of these wines. You can just kind of pull the cork and drink them. You don't need to be too finicky about needing to decant it. If you want to decant it, it certainly is not gonna hurt the wine. It, it will help it. I would not be mad to come home from work on like a Tuesday or Wednesday, pull the cork on this, and uh, enjoy it all night long or just with dinner. Really a fantastic second label. I think there's so much value in going the second label route. There's a lot of different second labels out there. Most of the first growths in Bordeaux have a second label. A lot of the wines out here in California and Napa have a second label. They're just really fantastic values. When you can't drink expensive wines all the time, which most of us cannot, uh, this is a great way to do it. All right, my final pick is actually coming from the United States and it's not a second label. I felt like it was a wine worthy of being included in this lineup and it's a wine that I discovered I was in New York. This is from Washington. This is Andrew Will. And this is the Two Blondes Vineyard, which I don't know, just, you know, blonde hair feels like. I don't know, just. Andrew Will is a fantastic small producer in Washington State in the Yakima Valley. They started making wine in 1989 and they only produce about 4,500 cases. The reason I picked this was, you know, a lot of people ask me what are some of the great values in Napa, and unfortunately, these days, there are so few. I mean, land is so expensive here. There are so few great values to be found in Napa Valley. I think Washington is a really great place if you're looking for great full-bodied reds, especially Cabernets, to get a little bit of value still. 50% Merlot, 30% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Cabernet Franc. So this is also a Bordeaux blend. Merlot is sort of the dominant grape in here. Merlot is not a bad word. I, I really like Merlot and I think for early drinking purposes, I think Merlot is a wonderful grape. It's a grape that has longevity, but it's also a grape that's beautiful in its youth. On the nose, there's like a lot of minerality to it. There's a little bit of graphite. There's definitely fruit. This is 100% a new world wine. The fruit is ripe. There's a richness, there's a softness, there's an elegance, there's a balance to this wine. 64 bucks. There is nothing in Napa Valley that I could direct you to for that has this amount of quality. It just doesn't exist. And that's one of the reasons that I love Washington State. They're doing such a great job of putting great quality wines out at a fraction of the price uh, from the rest of the world. This is definitely gonna be the fullest body of all of these. And if you're looking for fruit, if fruit is what you're after and you want the density, this is gonna be your wine all the way. The Chateau Neuf de Pop definitely has the, has the ripest fruit of all of this, sort of fruity kind of wine, but it's definitely on the lighter side of things. It's more medium to light bodied. As we've gotten here, the fruit is definitely darker, it's more blackberry, it's more cassis, it's a little bit more of that brambly fruit, and it's a little bit more dense and intense. I think these guys are doing great things. I, uh, I'm excited to see where they go, and this is still a great value, and I don't think it's gonna stay that way. As long as Napa Valley keeps getting more expensive, and Bordeaux keeps getting more expensive, and wines in general keep getting more expensive, eventually the world's gonna catch up to what's going on there. I think this wine is an incredible value. Just open this wine. This did not need any time to, to decant. It's fantastic right out of the gate. It's not crazy over abstracted. It's really balanced. It's really beautiful. The tannins are perfectly integrated. I just think this is a wonderful, wonderful wine. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I uh, I definitely have some purple teeth going on right now. Um, those are my Wednesday night wine picks. I hope this is helpful. All of these wines are available on wine.com. They're very easily accessible. If you can't find the Andrew Will, I know they do sell them on their website, and then I will link everything below. But that was today's daily vlog. I hope you enjoyed me kind of taking it back to the weekly wine. Wine picks. It was good to go back and just kind of taste some wines with you guys again, and um, I hope to do it again. If you guys have more things that you'd like me to taste, if there are regions, varietals, if there's specific wines you'd like me to try, um, you're always welcome to shout that out in the comments. I appreciate your feedback. It really helps me to pick wines and find out what you guys are thinking. Anyway, see you all tomorrow. It was a wonderful Wednesday. Cheers to Wednesday night wines, and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Mm -hmm.